All right, good evening. This is the September 12th meeting of the Town of Amherst Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, can I have roll call, please? Mancuso. Here. Palmer. Here. Swartz. Here. Waterman Culpa. Here. Hershey. Here. Kenzie. Here. Uh, for the town, Buckeye. Here. Fidel. Here. Quinn. Here. Robshaw. Here. Howard. We also have outside council here this evening as well. Right, Dan Spitzer from Hotsa Gross. Thank you. All right, first thing on our agenda is approval of um, minutes. We have two dates that we need to approve. If you recall last month, there was a correction that needed to be made to the June 6 meeting minutes. So I'll do them in order here. The first one um, are the June 6 meeting minutes. All right, does someone want to make a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the June 6 meeting minutes. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, motion carries one, two, the six, zero. Our next set of minutes, August 8th. which includes the public hearing and then our first item is um, Chateau Terrace, uh, the local district nomination number two. This is the nomination that was prepared by Jessica Black. Is she here? I understand you're not going to give any kind of a presentation. Okay. Yes. Yes, up there. Hi. Jessica Black, 79 through Hoff Avenue. Um, no, I decided against it um, solely because when I presented 22 Chateau, it had a lot of information on the neighborhood. And then when I put forth the information in the packet you guys have it all so I just felt like it was going to be very redundant if there is anything that you want to discuss I'm happy to add to it and I thought maybe mr. Baglioli would be presenting so I would just go in addition to him but since he's not I mean I, I think it's okay though I think you guys have all the information that you need and if you have questions I'm available okay, great thank you mm -hmm. um, is there any discussion on that at this point does anyone have any questions for her at this point no, I reviewed both documents and I found inconsistencies and things I don't agree with. Um, I suggest that a working group is formed to deal with um, both nominations and how they would possibly be merged because I see valid points in both. Um, so that, that's my suggestion is the working group is formed and I'd be happy to sit on that. Okay, great. I totally agree with that idea. Um, I think that, um, you know, if the commission goes forward with the district, it will be our nomination, not either of the two that we have. Um, but we have information in both that we absolutely can utilize in moving forward with that. So I support the idea of forming a working group. Okay. Do we want to look for volunteers now or do we want to send an email around and let people take a look, think about it a little bit and see who's interested in working on it? I could take the lead on that if you're not going to be in the working group. If you are, then you could take the lead on that of pulling everyone uh, um, in an email on dates and um, an interest on sitting on that. You can do it if you'd like. Okay, then okay. I will. Great. Um, another thing that I, I would suggest for the working group is also to basically take a walk around the neighborhood, take a look at these buildings. We have to really see what they look like and what would be contributing and what isn't contributing. So. Right, because, I mean, just for clarification, in the reports, a main street, I mean, it's like, it's almost like a recon survey was done of the property. And, and in order to move forward with a nomination, you really need intensive level work. And there is, there are 70 properties in this proposed district. And basically we have the year they were, I guess, built. Um, the current owner, um, 
somewhere, I think it was in Mr. Baglioli's, it said everything was in good condition. Um, we, we have very little on each individual landmark. And, and just so I can pontificate here for the public, if something comes in as a certificate of appropriateness for a modification to a structure, we as a commission need something to judge that certificate of appropriateness against. And the application is severely lacking in that right. Um, it's going to be a lot of work for this commission to fill in the holes for this district. Um, and it was not on our, our work agenda for this year. We are already in September um, with a new work agenda that will be decided by whomever sitting on the board in January um, for 2024. Um, so I think that's where I am with this application. So a working group to discuss the merits of, of both um, sets of paperwork um, for nomination and then to identify what else is needed, what time frame um, this commission could accomplish that if it's willing to take that on in its work scope. Thanks, Brian. Um, and, and I also agree, um, I, I think we have a really solid foundation. We have the structure of the district in place. Um, and so we have the framework to start moving forward and, and doing that legwork on, on, uh, on the district. So um, thank you for doing that. Okay. Um, all right, Madam, so I'm gonna make Madam a motion. Chairman, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, if, if you can set up a working group, that's fine. Just remember to coordinate with the town attorney's office as to open meeting requirements. Yes. And you know, it's it's not necessarily a quorum, you know, of, right. of the group. But if you set up a working committee, it may well be subject to the open meeting law or the notices. So just to make sure the public has a full opportunity to participate as we go forward. Yes. Um, yep. And obviously, any assistance that Laura or I can provide in terms of weather time. I will. Thank you. And we have we have done this before, and and we are aware of that. So absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, so I'm gonna make a motion uh, to adjourn the uh, Chateau Terrace local district nomination number two, which oh, is- I'll Second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, motion carries 6-0. Our next item then is Chateau Terrace local district nomination number one. This is the nomination that was submitted by Benderson Development. Um, I think we've basically had our discussion on that. Does anyone want to add anything else? We will work on these together, kind of combining the two and taking the information from both uh, in order to come up with um, the next steps for the district. Commonwealth report that they had done as part of their demolition. Right. Okay. All right. So we all need to speak into these little things here. They're not easy i have to tell you <laughs> yeah all right um yes and so right we have that information we've had it for a while yeah um yeah so i i think are we all in, all in agreement that we can but that's the level i'm not saying we need that level for each house right but there's a lot of information listed right. for missing for the other 69 properties right so we need to take a look at what we have figure out what we really need and then go from there. Okay. So, so what's Norm? Yeah, Norm Hershey, what's the uh, difference between this is a district proposed by Benderson? Is that, did well, I hear that correctly? Yes. So, Benderson also submitted, we have two submissions for a Chateau, Chateau Terrace historic district. Mm -hmm. Benderson made one, and then sure. the okay. Jessica Black, the community, did. So, we're really, I have them as two separate agenda items because they're two separate proposals but they're really proposing the same thing so if we pull everything together and just because ultimately ultimately the decision to move forward is basically our recommendation okay uh, we're not going to say she's making a recommendation or he's making a recommendation we're taking all of the information that we have mm -hmm. that we've received combined and from there we then make up our own and decide what we think should be included and not included. Is, is there a significant difference in the number of properties between the two? There's uh, not a proposals? significant difference, but there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. So I'm going to make a motion to adjourn uh, nomination. 
number one um, as well, so we have an opportunity to continue to do that work. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No, motion carries 6-0. All right, next item on our agenda is 22 Chateau Terrace. This is the landmark designation of the individual property located at 22 Chateau Terrace. Do we have any um, action or motions that we wish to take? I would like to make property? some statements prior to moving forward. The, so this, this is something I would propose to send to the town board if a motion were made for the nomination of this parcel. The consideration before the town board is the nomination of 22 Chateau Terrace as a local landmark. Three separate Amherst Town Code criteria for local landmarking per section 121-6, designation of historic landmark sites and districts, have been identified by the Historic Preservation Commission. That's saying that a majority of this board was willing to move this nomination forward. Criteria one, 22 Chateau Terrace is identified as lot number two on the original subdivision map for the College Hill Chateau Terrace subdivision for Sour and Sour. Lot number two, with the dimensions of 80 feet by 80 feet, was the first of three regularly sized residential properties after the larger Main Street parcel. These homes served as a gateway to the Chateau Terrace neighborhood. As the first residence, 22 Chateau represents an established and familiar visual feature of the neighborhood. Local landmarking is a tool that the town has to preserve properties which meet the criteria in the town of Amherst code for local landmarking. In this case, 22 Chateau Terrace meets the minimum threshold for criteria A5. You may be confused by the conclusion of the Commonwealth Heritage Group's June 2022 report prepared by Benderson Development and submitted as part of the local landmarking process. This was confusing as the petitioner prepared a nomination for local landmarking, not state and national register inclusion. The, the conclusion states that 22 Chateau as an individual property does not meet the minimum requirements for the state and national register listing. The State National Register of Historic Places has different standards and criteria on the significance of a property or group of properties that it has to have on a state or national wide, in, in state, statewide or national history. This is exactly why historic preservation commissions were created at the local government level. These historic preservation commissions were given criteria by the state government and the ability as a certified local government to locally list historic landmarks for protection for inappropriate modifications or demolition. 22 Chateau Terrace meets the town's codified criteria A5 for the standalone landmark, as a standalone landmark, because of a unique or singular physical characteristic as it represents an established and familiar visual feature of a neighborhood. As previously stated, 22 Chateau Terrace is the first residential lot in the subdivision. As the first house, it has prominence. Locally to this neighborhood of Amherst, this house is held to a higher regard than the houses deeper within the neighborhood. You might say, well, Bon Hava already impacted the Chateau neighborhood boundary. It did not. It did not due to the geographical boundaries of the subdivision. Those properties were not included in the subdivision. Also, one could say Born Hava enhanced, one could say Born Hava enhanced the importance of 22 Chateau Terrace because it created a distinction between residential and commercial properties along Chateau Terrace. The Born Hava development by joining previously narrower parcels, which allowed for larger development, shows the importance of maintaining the character of the Chateau neighborhood starting at the first residential parcel with a regular 80 foot by 80 foot lot. The original map shows the lots where Bornhava is and beyond moving east. That was, they were roughly 52 feet by 439 feet. The residential lots did not include those deep lots to the east along Main Street. Likewise, lot number one of the subdivision was intentionally large, uh, intentionally larger parcel for the commercial uses along Main Street, identifying the importance of the commercial properties along Main Streets in this area of Snyder. I referenced the subdivision map 
or the College Hill Chateau Terrace neighborhoods by Sour and Sour. Criteria two, 22 Chateau Terrace is identified as meeting the threshold for criteria A2 as well. Criteria A2 states the property must embody the distinctive characteristic of a type, a period, or a method of construction. The residence of 22 Chateau embodies the distinctive characteristics of the craftsman style residence in the circa 1920s to 1940s. Common features of the craftsman style include low pitch gable, triangular roofs, overhang eaves with exposed rafter, rafters and beams, pattern window panes, and cov a covered or enclosed front porch. There is no doubt 22 Chateau is a craftsman house. You may say, well, we have a lot of these houses in Amherst. Do we? This housing type is, a, is present in a very small area of Amherst. If you took all the structures in Amherst, I got the number 110,000 from a board member, and looked at the percentage of craftsman houses, maybe 200, mostly in Snyder, and a quarter in this neighborhood, you would see that less than 0.18% of the properties are craftsman type in Amherst. Now, take those that have been modified or are no longer significant examples of the style out. Most of the craftsmen's are not stucco examples. In the Chateau neighborhood, this is the only example of a stucco face craftsman house. The number of houses similar to this one in the town is l probably less than 0.0072% of the building stock if there were, let's say, eight stucco craftsman houses in the town. This one example of a craftsman home is an important one for the town. Criteria three, 22 Chateau Terrace also meets the town's criteria A1 for local landmarking, which states a property is associated with the lives of individuals or of people or of events significant in the national, state, or local history. As mentioned, 22 Chateau Terrace is part of the College Hill Chateau Terrace development, a 20th century residential subdivision accessed via Main Street in Snyder, a hamlet of Amherst. How the town was laid out is important to the town's history. Parts of Amherst are known for being agricultural, some parts are known for being commercial, some are known for having post-war housing, while other housing developments have different era, are from different eras. The Chateau Terrace part of Amherst is a dense residential area along Main Street, which is a straight shot to Batavia in the north, and straight is in quotations, straight shot to Batavia in the north and Buffalo to the south. The development was made possible by the normalization of the automobile to residential life. You could say, this property is one of 70 properties in the Chateau Terrace neighborhood. Why designate just this one? Why is it important to Amherst's local history? This one singular property is important because it is the gateway to the Chateau Terrace neighborhood. This neighborhood's development is important to Amherst development. The subdivisions of the early 20th century laid out much of Snyder, taking it from farmland and turning it into the largest collection of old homes in the town of Amherst outside of the village. So that was for discussion. Um, and as where I was going was be to lead up to a nomination of 22 Chateau. So does anybody have any comments? Questions? Would like to add, delete? I'd like to add okay. that I thought it was a very nice showing at the public hearing from the neighbors and came in support. Um, they're all listed here in the minutes, and I think their voices mattered. So at this time, I would like to make, make a motion to nominate. Let me read from, I get in trouble. Let me read from the document that I have in front of me. So understanding what, we're, what this motion is before she reads it, this will be motion to take the matter to the next level, which would be the town board, okay? Who makes the final decision on these matters? Okay. So this is a recommendation for local landmarking designation of 22 Chateau Terrace. 
whereas the town of Amherst has many significant historic, architectural, and cultural landmarks within its borders, and whereas 22 Chateau Terrace meets local landmark criteria A1, is associated with the lives and individuals or of people or of events significant to the national, state, or local history, criteria A2 embodies the distinctive characteristic of a craftsman-style residence, and criteria A5 represents an established and familiar visual feature of a neighborhood, and whereas built in 19, uh, circa 1920, this property is also associated with the history of suburban development in the town of Amherst, and whereas it retains a moderate level of integrity of design, materials, craftsmanship, and setting, and whereas it represents an established and familiar visual feature to the neighborhood as the first residential structure for the gateway of Chateau Terrace neighborhood, and whereas the proposed nomination is further described in the attached documents, now there be it resolved that pursuant to Amherst Code Section 121.6 of the duties and designations of the Historic Preservation Commission, the commission would like to recommend for designation the property at 22 Chateau Terrace in Amherst, New York as a local landmark under local landmark criterion a one two and five that is my motion it would be it would be um, accompanied by the commonwealth heritage group report from june 2022 prepared for benderson development for 22 chateau the letter that or the memo that I previously read, um, as well as um, previous submitted sub submissions um, for landmark designation um, by the community member as part of the public record. Also to be attached to the public record are any minutes regarding this property um, that, are, are, that, that this commission has um, discussed. Um, and anything else anyone thinks I left out as part of the public record? So you got the report, your statement, what was the? All the minutes, okay. and then the official, okay. the, the any, designation any? by the community member okay. that I've modified. Right. The, oh. actual, the actual application The application, right. the application which was modified by, by me in the memo um, right. here. here tonight. Okay. All right, we need a second. Mary Lou Mancuso, I second. All right, I'd like a roll call vote, please. Mancuso? Yes. Palmer? No. Swartz? Yes. Waterman Culpa? Yes. Hershey? Yes. Kenzie? Yes. All right, motion carries 5 0. Thank you. I'm sorry, 5 1. No, it's five one. Thanks. Nice try. All right. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, the twenty two Chateau Terrace demolition referral. Um, I am. Unless there's any discussion on this, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn this item in light of the fact that we have um, a landmark application pending. Um, That's appropriate. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Motion carries 6 0. All right. Maybe, next. Uh, maybe you could just state to pontify that now that board, now that this board is 22 Chateau is still in process where no permits are able to be acted upon. Um, right by an owner because it is still in process for landmarking right thank you yes so there can be no building permits issued with regard to the property until the town board decides yay or nay okay um, all right next item 400 mill street st. Mary's mother house we have a certificate of appropriateness application hi welcome me back Gary Brown. So, obviously, we're trying to do this project within cost parameters. So, what we've 
come to you, and I think James is going to put the roof diagram up on the screen. Do you want the uh, the building? The building diagram that shows the two sides. So what we're proposing to do is to use slate or synthetic slate on the two street sides. Which is it? Slate or synthetic slate? Well, so what we'd love to do is to bid it both ways. And because because of the, the amount of detail on these two sides, um, I'm not sure the synthetic slate is going to be that much less expensive, but we'd like to reserve that option. And, and if, if there was a dramatic difference in, in the bids, we would come back to you and say, this is the way we want to go. But at this point, I guess we're looking for you as approval to do these two street sides, the two visible sides, the south and the east side, which would be the main entrance and the Mill Street side in a slate and then the rest would be in the grand manor architectural type shingle i did bring some samples of the actually brought a piece of slate and i brought a piece of the synthetic slate i don't know if you want me to pass them around mm -hmm. or Absolutely. Gary, for clarification, this is the same synthetic slate that was installed at the Orchard Park Town Hall? No, the Orchard Park Town Hall was the uh, Certainty Grand Manor shingle. Yeah, okay. That's real. Yeah. Okay, okay. So these, the synthetic slate are actually made in Holland, New York, of 80% recycled materials. I don't, I can hold it. That's fine. The other one. This is original. Pardon me? This is an original. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. Slate. Yeah. And obviously the synthetic comes in different sizes. You know what I mean? I, it's, it's, it's what I was given by the factory. Is this just a sample? Is this the product you're... That is a, correct. That's just a sample I got. They have a variety of it, it's, we models would, or versions. We would go to, color. This is a correct. We would go to a lighter color to match what's there. The, the, lighter the color, color that I, you're proposing? I, I don't, but once again, that would be done before we proceeded. You know, at, at this point, like I said, we're just looking for your blessing to, to do these two sides and then do the rest in a very high-end architectural shingle. What did he say? Very high. Could you just repeat that? Very high-end architectural? Yes. It's, it's like correct. It's just... It's a certainty Grand Manor shingle. It's um, it's heavy, slate. heavier. It's not slate, but it's it's a slate-looking shingle. It is the top of the line in the the shingle world. And then um, Sue, can I just ask you one more question? With what you just showed us, with, you said with the um, synthetic slate, how strong is it? How what are how how well does it wear? It comes with. <laughs> It comes with a 50-year guarantee. Okay. It's um, it's it's been around for probably 20 years now, maybe 30 years. Um, my biggest concern, and we discussed this when we met on site, is the darker colors tend to fade, like like a darker metal fades in the sun. But this being a lighter gray, I don't think we're going to have that that issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are they homogeneous colors? Yes. And, and I brought along. I can leave this with you guys, and uh, they go to great lengths to make sure the lots are all the same. So just so I understand, uh, we're not really approving anything tonight. I mean, we're not, we're not granting a certificate of appropriateness on anything tonight, right? You're really just asking for our kind of direction and whether you should move forward to get these bids, and then when we actually see, without seeing the actual full Proposal. Correct. What we we want those two sides because that will we're trying to bring this into a, a cost. So we would have two sides that from the street would look just like they are now, and then the rest would be an architectural shingle which would look like slate, 
but obviously not be slate. Okay. So, so can, can I make an observation? Sure. That to substitute synthetic slate for slates is a big deal. Correct. Um, wouldn't you want to gain all the information, especially financial information you could to present to the board as why you would be proposing this synthetic material and why wouldn't, why, why wouldn't you take this step without speaking to the board or commission? I don't want to do this two or three times. Do you know what I mean? I want to get pricing once. So what I would do is I'd get a, a base bid for slate and an alternate, what does it deduct to go to a synthetic slate? Then I'd come to you, and if it, was, if it was nothing, if it was a minuscule difference, I wouldn't waste your time. I would say, we're going with slate, this is the color, bring you a sample, and then ask for your, for your blessing. But if it's a big difference, and it, it might be as much as, on just these, could be up to $100,000. But it, like I said, because of all the detail involved, I had one contractor telling me he doesn't think there'll be that much of a, a, a difference in price. I mean, just a suggestion. It is some work to put together some documents, but why wouldn't you bid the whole project in, let's say, asphalt, bid the whole project in slate, and do an alternate as synthetic slate or, or something like that? Or make your, make your alternates slate, synthetic slate, and bid the whole project um, in one material. I mean, obviously the reason is is money you know that that we could do that but it's it's the cost factor I mean we had a price of what was it one and a half million to do just the shingles so from there to go like to the Grand Manor we're, we're getting close to two million dollars we go to slate it could be five or six million dollars you know what I mean it's just that's so what we're trying to do is say hey would you let us do these two sides and at that point we would proceed quickly so, so remind us what the expected time frame for, say, two sides, the south and the west uh, facades or at, roofs of the building. At this point in time, I mean, it, it, this is next year. There's, there's no way that. The, the, right. Um, so what was the install time? The install time, I'm guessing, for t just due to these two sides, we're probably looking at um, four to six weeks. In what material? In the, yeah. no, in the slate or the. Uh, uh, the synthetic slate. The asphalt would go faster, obviously. So you think that slate for half the building will take maybe six weeks? Well, it's not. It's not even close to half the building because we're just doing the the two front sides. You know what I mean? And there's, the, it's probably less than a quarter of the roof. So what are you proposing for the? Rest. The rest of the roof. Correct. So could we go back to that map with the two sides designated, um, the site plan? There we go. So maybe you're saying the courtyards are included in this? Is that? Nope. No. No. And not doing any work in the courtyards? Well, the, the courtyards would be replaced with, with asphalt shingles. That's our, the only place you would see slate or the synthetic slate would be those two sides, those two elevations that you see if you go in the front door or if you're pulling in off of Mill Street. So how is that not half of the exterior of the building? It, well, it's, it's half the exterior of the building, but it's the whole roof structure. You've got the big um, the chapel roof in the center, and you've got the courtyards. So there's, there's many more. So it's what are you proposing project. for the chapel asphalt as well? Correct. You're proposing asphalt everywhere except, except those, two those two sides. So, get, get, Norm Hershey here. Um, Gary, did to the, the asphalt that you referred to, that was what we witnessed when we came out and looked at that one area yes. that had been done. Yes. And that's an asphalt shingle that's to uh, look like um, slate is Correct. what the intention. That, that and that, Grand Manor, that was the certainty Grand Manor. Yes. yes. Grand Manor. Yes. Okay. And the cost to do the entire building was 
4.5 million? No, uh, if to do it in shingles, we had had a uh, original contract of about 1.5 million. To go to the Grand Manor, we'd be adding a couple hundred thousand dollars to that. But I, I, what was that number, um, the total? The, uh, we originally had a price of about 1.5 million. 1.5. In okay. the Grand Manor, um, okay. would, would add a couple hundred thousand dollars to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my, I know you've provided us literature on other historic buildings that have gone to, in, in other states, that have gone and used this asphalt shingle to, that simulates or looks like slate. Um, I just, I have to lean towards that idea here from the ground. I can't believe it's going to be significantly different. and. Uh, it certainly won't affect the historic status of the building itself, so I'm leaning towards being more flexible here myself. So this was a compromise. This is us saying, hey, look, let's, let's do the two most obvious sides in a slate or the synthetic slate, and then the rest we'll do with this high-end slate apparent shingle. So we, we've talked about courtyards being in asphalt before. We've never talked about a mixture of materials on the exterior of the building. Let's take the northwest corner of the building. Everybody see it? So what does that roof look like? We've got a peak. So we've got Slate going up one side and asphalt on the other. Well, uh, we can we can work out our transitions so it wouldn't be ugly. Well, I'm I'm just looking around to see where would the appropriate what transitions be, and so like say that peak is done in slate, um, then the shed roof coming off the north facade would be asphalt running into a valley with with slate like and then so do you break it midway point at a dormer and then continue I'm just trying to figure out where so the appropriate transition is. Northwest you look at the top left corner, right? Bottom left corner. Bottom left corner. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so um, I'm guessing that the transition could be at the peak of the roof. It would be where? Peak at, the peak at the peak, or we could do it at the valley. I would prefer it at the peak. Can I ask a legal question? Are we allowed to have a working session with the owner, a, a separate working session, or do we have to continue? It has to be an open meeting. Can, can, can I back up before we even get to that point? Okay. Like, so the reason these substitute materials are being proposed is because you're saying that slate is not financially feasible for your clients. Why have you not gone the economic hardship route? I mean, that would be next, I guess, and, and we're... Um, to because that's where that. we get our information from. Like, look, let's cook the books. Like. Let's see where the money is. Why are you saying that, you know, let, let's, let's put data behind the statement that the, the owner cannot afford it. And there we can make appropriate judgments from there. Well, I'd also like to add that, I, sorry, Norm, but I'd like to refute your statement. I think it would drastically alter the historic status of the building by changing materials. That's, that's one of the too. tenets of historic preservation and why it was landmarked. And, and this is not a local landmark. State I mean, it is and national. It's state it's and national three. register yeah. landmark. That's this, right. as we talked about earlier, there is a big difference at the threshold for the significance of a property being on the state and national register. But is it the state using Grand Manor shingles? Aren't they using Grand Manor shingles on the building over by the Peace Bridge? Isn't that a big stink? I don't know anything about it. That was in the paper. Um, what they're doing at that building is all temporary. And it has nothing to do with the future. Yeah, everything to do with it's a 
it's the old chapel that's near the Peace Bridge, and it's been caught up in a conundrum of now nothing's happening to it, and the state is the um, proprietor of it right now. And all the state is doing right now is stabilizing it, and it's just temporary um, to keep it from water from going in. But there's nothing, there's no direction for future um, decisions or materials. Probably because a bigger review would need to happen in, in order well, for that decision a, to be made. Honestly, they need programming. Like, it doesn't have a purpose. So until they know what they're going to do with it. But knowing the state, that could be on there for 20 years, you know, before they get around to. I'm just. Uh, yeah, that's a different project. And even if the state's doing it, it would be appropriate. Um, okay, so here's my here are my thoughts, just my thoughts. Um, I I would not be opposed to considering partial, okay. But what I don't again feel like I have is the information that I really need in order to make that ultimate decision, okay. It would be very helpful to me if you actually bid it out in all the scenarios and came in here with all the options. <laughs> And then, and I, and I honestly, I'm not sure, I don't know how much more work that is to do that, but then, because we keep asking you for more information, then we'd have all the information, and then I guess a decision could be made oh. yay or no, yay or nay, and then you could, depending on how it all worked out, it can go to the next step. But do we have all the information at that point? Even if we knew what the products cost and the differential between them, it doesn't give us the information on what the owner can afford. Okay, well, the, I'm, not, I'm not talking about talking, getting into the hardship. That is, in my opinion, that is not something, that is something that he raises, it's not something that we raise, okay? But the question is, what are the options? What are all the options? Like, real numbers. This is, the, these are, this is the material. You, you take a look at giving these questions that we're kind of answering for you. You take a look at it and say, all right, if we're going to do partial, this is the way we would lay it out. Because we're not going to kind of figure that out for you. Right. You, you come to us with a, a thorough proposal for whatever your scenarios are. And I would suggest it be all, OK? Because there's certainly people on this commission who are looking for that. Or there are people on the commission who might be willing to consider something else. But I personally don't feel like I still have enough information to say to you, sure, let's just do par partial, okay? I just feel like, and I understand what you're trying to do, and that's great that you're, you're basically asking us for some direction. And hopefully this is helping you and get a sense of kind of where we are um, as board members, um, you know, going forward. I mean, I am, I'm not, if it can be done in a way that it does not, that, that it is visually okay and it, and it is something that still works, I'm all for having it be a less costly option, but I just don't feel like I know enough to be able to okay. come to that decision at this point, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, okay. from my perspective, getting contractors to look at something like this it's a nightmare getting pricing on something like this you know it, uh, it's a nightmare so I will do my best but yes I I hear you I would like to reiterate that that is I'm in the complete opposite end of the spectrum as Sue on that because I do not feel finances come into this decision it's about the materials unless it is an economic hardship request and you know, I think it's really good information for you to have as an owner's representative of how much these materials cost and the, and the price differential. But for me, it's about the material. And I, I do not think that as a commission member, I should be looking at anything other than the material as a substitute and evaluating that according to the criteria set forth by the body that gives us our power. Um, and, and that's not going to be taken into consideration for my vote as far as the economics go, unless this went to an economic hardship request. Okay. Yeah, I kind of just um, sort of agree with Kate. I guess it's, it's a lot, it feels like for me, I'll just speak for myself, like a lot of responsibility because once we decide one way or the other and if it were to be to allow it 
a change in the original. It, it never goes back. We are the ones who, who made that decision mm -hmm. for the rest of time, good or bad. So to not have, like, what are we doing it over is where I guess I'd maybe it's like between Sue and Kate of, all right, we're going to, are we going to consider it? And based on what criteria, but what are we talking about when it comes down to the numbers? If they're that close, I don't know what kind of decision I'm going to be able to say, like, I'm going to be the one to vote on something that will impact this property forever based on long standing. It's been on since what, 2000? 2000, 2000? Like, this isn't new. The so original it's, material. Right. No, but oh. I mean, when it was landmark. <laughs> So it right. just, it feels like it's not a willy-nilly mm -hmm. decision. So any, all of the info I think that we're saying is absolutely critical. Anyone else have anything else to, any questions or anything to add? I'm going to make, if I'm allowed, our council can tell me I'm not allowed to do this. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if they let me make a suggestion. And that is, I would withdraw this application for certificate of appropriateness because it's really not, you're not really officially, officially asking us for anything at this moment, OK? And then have you go and do what we just discussed and then come in with another one as opposed to having this set on our agenda and having us adjourn it okay. and having it be incomplete. Is that appropriate for me to ask him to do? Right. Okay, thank you. That's my suggestion. Okay. So are you withdrawing it at this point? Well, it's denied, right? So it's... Well, no, we haven't denied it. Okay. We haven't voted on it. That's yeah, why I'm yeah, saying. We'll officially withdraw it. Okay, so this is being withdrawn. It comes, it's off the agenda, and then you'll give us yes. the one that hopefully we'll be able James. to get a vote on. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, so that has been withdrawn, so I don't have to adjourn it. All right. Okay, next item. Um, local landmark plaques, Harlem Road School and Main Street entranceways. So at our last meeting, we took a look at the plaques that we have. Um, and so I guess my question for the commission is, they need to be mounted, right? Do we want to be part of the process of deciding where they are mounted and how they are mounted? I think so. Yes. Sure. So um, I was going to ask if there are people who would like to um, basically maybe work with, I don't know if it's James who would um, do that to assist in, in looking at that. Any I'd be happy to do that. Okay. If that's okay with everyone else, unless someone really wants to. No. You go for it, Brian. <laughs> All right. So Brian, um, I don't know if anyone else is interested in, in working with him on that. Yeah, just to make sure that, you know, they're they're mounted in the appropriate place, they're mounted properly, et cetera. Yes. Yes. And and I ask, were you planning on doing some kind of press release? So that's the next thing. Um, my next question was, do we want to do a press release or um, how would we like to um, and would we want to do that after they're mounted and invite the board to a location? Or a, what are your thoughts on that? Maybe, um, Deputy yeah, what Mayor. Is, what is typical? Is it mounted first and then invite the board? I would. You could present it. You could make a presentation and then say it's going to be hung. I think whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah, Sounds like a time frame. Sure. Because, right. I mean, Brian's going to pick out great spots for these, but maybe having the plaques in someone's hand in some type of advertisement of this might be best just for, you know, the ability to photograph something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, mm. I would just like to suggest that um, to Brian, that you make it in a place where it's prominent because when we had to go find um, plaques, the people who worked there didn't even know where they were. For Rosary Hall and um, they, they weren't were, prominently No, displayed. they weren't prominent and they were little. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they well, weren't we nice either. like these. Okay. All right. So, um, so the commission would like us to formally present these to the town board. So we would do that at a town board meeting then? Okay. Or can we 
do it on, on site? I, what, I'm asking for yeah, suggestions. What do y'all want to do? How do you want to do it? Well, you have to do one site, right? Yeah. Yeah. Harlem Road School. Harlem Road School. Yeah. Okay, so um, Debbie, can you help us figure out how to coordinate that then? Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, so we will do a presentation of the plaques to the town board. Debbie Buckeye will assist us in figuring out where and when and how we do that. Okay, great. Now, I also wanted to discuss, um, in terms of the plaques, we do have, still have money in our budget, okay? These plaques, uh, for two plaques, again, prices will be higher because everything's more expensive, right? Every day that goes on, everything becomes more expensive. So my guess is it may be more expensive than this, but they were uh, $1,054.75 for the two plaques that we have. We have uh, roughly um, $2,000 still left in this year's budget, okay? So I was gonna suggest that we, we order two more, but in order to do that, and that's why I, I asked James yeah. to give everyone a list of all of our landmarks. Um, I was wondering if there would be any interest in having us divide these up and kind of drive around um, to each of them and see uh, if there are any that we feel would be um, a good choice. And then we could decide, maybe, maybe pick four, and then we could call the owners and see if they would be willing to, if they're interested in, in getting one before we order them. I mean, we still have a couple months to be able to do that. But we could divide these up if you'd like and just you know drive around and, you already know Rosary has one, right? So that's done. Okay, so, so those two are done. But would you like to divide them up? We've got. 19 then. Well, street furniture gets. Oh, street furniture's off. Done. Yeah, that's done. So, um, schoolhouse, Mennonite, me. Yeah, Harlem Road's done. All right. All right, so you will do the first four, Norm. And street furniture is done. I'll do five. Water tower. Um, it's very well. It's, it's it could be. I'll go look for it. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I will. Isn't that no. We've got the future. No, it's. Oh no, but I'm saying. No, there is oh, something there. there. Development around it. You know what I'm saying? No. The, yes, there is something already there. Yes. There is, yeah, but but not a plaque. So I'll take Hedstrom. I'll take um, Water Tower. Okay. I'll take Williamsville South High School. And I'll take Sacred Heart. Anybody want to do the rest? Young's Road, Park School, Stonehouse, Wrench Road, Richfield, Four Seasons. Mary Lou, you want to take a few? Um, so Young's Road is the. It's a house. That's the house. That's a little house on the golf course. No. no. Well, oh, that's the house with the woman. The woman. only house left now. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Right. Right. And the park school is the only house that's left. Yeah, I can help you with that. And the branch road is the one. And Richfield, you know those four. Yeah, that's So the hamlet of Getzville Historic District, are those grouped enough in the village we're putting up um, uh, Williamsville Watermill? signs book ending the district are is that i don't know the area well enough to know if there are if that's an opportunity those signs are much cheaper if we do something out of like metal with the the i think it's like a imprinted applique on it mm -hmm. or a historic district or district yeah that is mounted on a standard um i'm not Street furniture is already done. No, but the one plaque though. Yeah, but I, I almost say, feel like the, the aluminum. Is all over the place? It is yeah. in Snyder. 
and then mm -hmm. maybe yeah. it kind of detract from the beautiful yeah. signs that already yeah. exist. <laughs> so would someone like to take that? The Gatsville? Yep. I can, yeah, I can do Gatsville. Okay, how about- I have a feeling it's very short area. Yeah. How about, um, I'll do STEM. And then, um, And so we've got country, CCP Stone House and the Cemetery Stone Chapel. Anybody else want to take those on? I'm, I'm going to do that one. I'll do that. All right, Brian, you got 19 and 20. Oh, and Harlem Road's got one. All right, too. so for our next meeting, we will have looked at all these, okay? And then we can kind of discuss which ones we might want to approach um, and see if they're interested. Is that? Reasonable for everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, Explore Buffalo Tour. Mary Lou, do you want to talk about it? I was thrilled with that. And you and these wonderful people that come to all these meetings. You should have come to that. Um, it was an amazing event, just like the last one was four years ago. Um, it was well attended uh, on a kind of rainy day. Uh, people still braved it. They laughed at all our jokes. And um, they were so interested in, in everything about those houses. and. Um, I, I just think it's an amazing way to get our word out there. And I think if we go back to the gatehouse, which he really wanted us to come, and any house that we can actually get into a house. Mm -hmm. I mean, these were wonderful. And look at the turnout. I don't know what the number was. I don't know what the reviews were. Oh, it was at least 40. Yes, at least. Um, yep. And those aren't houses, so I, I think it was a great representation of our historic pla places, and I think we need to do more of those. Yeah, I agree, and it was a nice, pr you know, they, um, yeah, I was there. There was a nice presentation that was, was done before the meeting, or before the tour of the, the two buildings, and so, yeah, definitely. Uh, and it looks like Explore and more, you know, that they're interested in, in if we could come up with people who are interested in, le you know, letting people in to see their properties, I'm sure they would be interested in, in putting something together, and, too. So it's we, a good idea. We know of two, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Next one is, uh, okay, 2024 commission membership. So. Um, we are, we have two commission members coming up, well, two commission members whose initial terms expire at the end of the year. Uh, that would be me and that would be Kate, okay? I have already indicated that um, I cannot comply with the um, you can't miss more than three meeting rule. And so I will not be, you know, volunteering for um, the commission beyond the end of this year. Um, so, we, so we know we have, and then we're also already missing a person, so we have potentially, for, certainly one opening. I don't know if we have uh, someone to fill the second opening. We had discussed a possibility on that. I don't know where we're at with that. Um, but we don't make the decision anyway. I know. Yep. Um, so my question is, how do we want to handle that? Do we want to um, do another solicitation and add in the paper? You want to wait until next year? I just wanted to bring it up. I can reach out to AIA again. Okay. I thought we found Jen. We can reach out to AIA. Could be three. You have Four. the. It, it could be three not there. 
Which, which would, law. right. So I, I don't know what her plans are, okay. Um, but we, I'm not coming back and we have an opening already. So that's two, okay. If you, I mean, just waiting until the last minute, if you end up with only four, then that means you can't do business if anyone's not at a meeting. So, um, so Kate's gonna reach out to AIA again. Um, Debbie, we did something, the town did something, we put an ad in the paper. The ad in the paper, in the B. Okay. We wanted it prepared. You could see what we did the last time. Could we do that? Yeah. We could. Okay. Would you want to prepare what you'd want it to say, or? Um, can I, do I know what was done last time? I honestly am we not sure. find it. Okay. We can find it, maybe you can look at it. Yeah, if I could do okay. that. Yes. I'd be happy to do that, okay. All right. All right, anything more on membership? All right, old business. Uh, CLG grant submission of preservation day. Um, our last roundtable session is September 27th. Did everyone get the email on that? That just came out a couple days ago? Yes. yes. Right. Love it. it is the 27th, because then they reference the 31st. I know, and I emailed him immediately after that and told him he needed to fix it. Um, so it is the 27th. And, um, and it is um, in person. Um, and Zoom, right? So. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's Zoom also. He oh, it's said right. it was in well, his it invitation. So I don't know if it really is or not. I don't think it is. I think it's, she's Zooming, she's, the speaker, so the topic of this is very important. It's actually gonna be community outreach, which I think is something we haven't heard anything on uh, this year. So um, Last session. I would encourage everybody who can get there to attend. Um, yes, right. So that, so that basically finalizes the grant, okay? At that point, we're done with all of the things that we said we're going to do with the grant. So I'm already in the process of preparing the year-end report, <coughs> CLG report, which I will have done for the next meeting, and then we'll send it over to them. Um, so then it's closing out the grant. Does everyone know what needs to be done in order to close out the grant? I mean, you nailed it, which was just the follow-up report, and then I, we can send that to SHPO. All right, so that will be finished by at the end of this month, so we should be able to do whatever needs to be done to close that grant out. Um, do we need anything from PBM? Don't they have to do a narrative or something on it? Didn't they do that last time? No, it does say it was in. It should. You know. I mean, I'm going to ask for it. I'm not doing yeah. that. And did they submit all their bills? Uh, yeah. Did I submit my bills? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, okay. they were the contractor, so they should prepare something as a closeout statement. All right. Um, can I just mention one thing? Just back to the, um, the round table, looking at the email that I got, it does give the location of the Carnegie Arts Center, but then it says in parentheses or Zoom. Yep. It does. All right, well, I'll check with him on it, but Would I- you check, please? Yeah, I will. That's what it says. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Right. All right, I'll check with him. But I don't believe that's the case. I mean, the whole point okay. of this is for us to be yeah. together for this last yeah. one, so if you offer it as a Zoom, it's, people are not gonna come, you know? All right, I'll clarify that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, and, okay. All right, so then education plan website. I did email to James, I didn't get a chance to look. Did you actually update the site? I, so I made the easy changes, right? The low hanging fruit, but um, there's, I haven't gotten to the pictures yet, right. yeah. So I'll coordinate with you about the uh, descriptions. Yeah. Um, and um, 
Okay. I can send that over to IT. Okay. So um, I did provide to James um, all of my photos from Preservation Day. So we will update the photos on the website. I also gave him some direction in terms of removing names of um, resource people who are, are no longer um, active and also, um, you know, at the end of the year, then it will be updated again to remove the, you know, folks who, whose terms have expired as of the end of the year. Um, I also said to him, we don't have a list of our landmarks on this webpage. Um, and so James is going to work to put that back on again as well. And we were talking about some ideas on how that might get done down the road. But, uh, but this will also be added because it's not there. Or a list of the landmarks will be added because it's not there. And Sue, I also have some pictures. Should I send it to James or just send it to send you it first? To James. James? Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously we're not going to post everything, but right. He or IT can decide which ones would be mm -hmm. appropriate. Okay. Thank you. All right. And then the last thing was on training. Remember, we have one more, um, technically, one more training session coming to us from Preservation Buffalo Niagara for this year. I did uh, communicate with Ben and told him that we don't want it for this year, we want to push it forward. Um, and he said he would talk to everybody about that, and he doesn't see that as a problem, but he'd let me know. So I did do that as well. So that'll be something that you'll have, you know, available next year. All right, so that's all I had. Does anyone have anything else? Miscellaneous? Yes, I have a question. Um, in the minutes that we approved earlier, um, I'll reference it. Item number nine on old business. Which one? The minutes from August 8th. Uh, we made a motion to recommend to the town board to hold a public hearing about the statute. local statute. Yep. Has the town board made a date for a public hearing? Not that I'm aware of yet. Okay. And who will be handling that? Nora, does the town attorney's office handle the next phase of that, do you know? It depends on your particular area. Well, we, we did a resolution, so the resolution. Okay. Exactly. It would be a. Did, but did you do like a? Did you maybe do like a letter with the resolution and submit it to the town clerk to be put on a town board agenda? I'm not an attorney, but that would be what I would. That would be a very it, strong way to. And then it'd be on the agenda, and then you set the date for the public hearing. So, so you probably need a letter to accompany the resolution. Okay. So Nora drafted the resolution. Um, Yeah, okay. I mean, the resolution was done at the last meeting, so, okay. Okay, he can write the letter. And the resolution would have the proposed statute attached to it, so that's really uh -huh. what they have. Okay. Yep, resolution was already done. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, I think it's processed, so, yeah, it's, I think, it's, yeah. We're moving it along, okay. All right, is there anything else for the good of the order? All right, then I'm going to, um, I need a motion to adjourn. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you very much, everybody.